And you can always believe tradition or your own reasoning or your own thought process if you want to, but what we've all found over time is, are we always right? <laughs> no, we're, we're not. And so we're better off just going with what the Scriptures say. I want to spend some time in Isaiah 62 so we can learn a little bit more about this new Jerusalem. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the brightness thereof go forth as brightness, until the righteousness thereof goeth, go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Now you can see that the subject here is, is Jerusalem that God is addressing. Notice verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. You see that? He is specifically speaking to Jerusalem in this passage. Look with me at verse 12. And they shall call them, so that's third person, them, the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and notice what it says, and thou, in other words, and you, in other words, the person I'm talking to right there, and thou, thou shalt be called, sought out a city not forsaken. You see what's going on there? So in other words, in Isaiah 62, there's a thou, second person, and a them. In other words, he's talking to one person and he's talking about a third person. When he talks to the thou... He says, O Jerusalem, thou shalt be called a city not forsaken. So it's very clear in Isaiah 62 that the person that's being addressed is Jerusalem itself. Notice with me verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy, so that's the, the second person that he's addressing there, shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. Notice this next part. And thou shalt be called by a new what? What happens with a bride when she gets married? She's called by a new name, right? And so that's exactly what's happening to Jerusalem in that verse. Keep Isaiah 62, but get Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 12. Revelation 3.12 Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Now, Notice something really interesting here. In verse 12, at the beginning of it says, And he shall go no more out. See that? So what happens is, there's this bride which is a city. But in talking about these folks that overcome in Revelation 3, it says they shall go no more out. On the Sabbath day, what's one of the restrictions as to what you can do? You can't travel, can you? And so what's fascinating here is, isn't this consistent with entering into rest when what happens is God marries a particular city and then the them of 62, the, the saints, if what they do is they then are established there and they never leave it. They always dwell with God there. Isn't that interesting? Go back to, with me to Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah 62, verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Verse 4. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Now, get, keep, keep this, but get Jeremiah 23. 
get Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 30. Jeremiah 23, 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. They attribute things to God that God didn't say. Verse 32. Behold, I am against them, that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. So you can see he has a problem with these prophets. Notice verse 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of the hosts our God. Now notice with me verse 39. So I, I read those verses to you there so you would get the context. But what, what's happening there is God has a problem with those prophets because they prophesy falsely. And because they prophesy falsely, here's what he does in verse 39. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you and I will forsake you. That's the same word that we saw in Isaiah 62. And the city that I gave you, See, what he says there is the prophets prophesy falsely and what God decides to do is he decides to forsake them and their city. He says, it's not mine. I forsake it. Now go back with me to Isaiah 62. 